Investors certainly have a lot on their plate this week. We've got a jam-packed earnings calendar with reports from some big names like Microsoft, Apple, and Google parent Alphabet. Also, the Federal Reserve kicked off its two-day policy-setting meeting today. And, of course, we're going to get our first read of first quarter gross domestic product later in the week. Let's talk about all this now with Zach Griffiths. He is senior macro strategist at Wells Fargo. Zach, good to have you on the show again. Let's start with earnings for a moment because uh, tech stocks are leading us lower today. Do you think we've got a little bit of stage fright on the part of investors as they wait for some of those big reports to come out? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Alexis. Great to see you as always. And I think that is what you have going on today. And it comes down to the fact that I think there's been a lot of optimism baked into equity markets and markets more broadly. So these earnings reports are events that can be more and more difficult to rise to the occasion. And I think that's what you're seeing today. But overall, we think the economic backdrop going forward is going to be positive for equities and our colleagues in economics look for growth to hit nearly six and a half percent this year. So it's hard to argue with that as a strong fundamental backdrop for markets going forward. And Zach, as you know, FOMC meetings are happening today and tomorrow, and usually they result in increases in intermediate and long-term treasury yields. Do you expect that to be the case again this week? That's exactly what we're looking for, and a couple things play into that. We're not expecting any major policy changes, certainly no changes to the policy rate, and we expect them to hold asset purchases steady. What you've seen over the past couple of meetings is rates rise around these meetings as the Fed has been remarkably comfortable with longer term yields rising. And we've seen a pause in that recently, but yields are certainly much higher than they were when the year started. And the Fed sees this as a vote of confidence in the U.S. economy, and they are not concerned with it at this time. We expect Chairman Powell to reiterate that notion, and we think that helps yields continue to rise as we have economic growth improving and a very heavy treasury supply in 2021, which is going to be a story that we're focused on for the remainder of the year. Zach, would love to get your thoughts on what we're seeing happening in the commodities market the past few days. They have been soaring, particularly copper, uh, because it's economically sensitive. Um, A lot of people saying that this rebound in first quarter GDP is going to be super strong. But are you concerned at all what the effect is going to be on prices, raw material prices and others, and what that's going to do to inflation? Yes, definitely. That's a huge story. And you're starting to see more and more CEOs during these earnings calls point out higher input costs. And you're seeing that in many different sorts of commodities. So that's a concern of ours. But what you think what we think you're going to see on the inflation front over the next couple months is a big increase uh, on a year over year basis. And that really comes down to base effects when the economy was really fully shut down last year. So we do see those things as transitory, but we think it's going to get much more difficult, certainly around the June meeting, for the Fed to talk about this new flexible average inflation targeting regime if we do have inflation rising above its 2% target on various measures. It's been easy for them up to this point to say we'd like to see inflation rise, expectations rise, and really they're not going to do anything with policy until that happens. Once we start to see that, we think that creates a more difficult backdrop for the Fed as they assess whether or not these transitory factors are going to be longer standing than currently anticipated. And we think that could result in some more market volatility, certainly around the June meeting and going forward as the Fed has a tight rope to walk with regard to monetary policy and rising inflation. We do expect the Fed to let inflation run hot, at least for a short period of time. But at what point do you think the Fed's gonna be under pressure to raise interest rates again? Yeah, so I think the next step for the Fed is going to be tapering asset purchases, and they've made it clear that they want to see substantial further progress on the economic front and towards its goals before they do that. And I think it's going to come down to some of these inflation prints after April and May to see whether or not these price pressures are around to stay. So that's going to be key for how they communicate going forward progress towards their goals We think it's most likely that by the end of this year, they announce a taper for it to commence in early 2022. But as far as an increase in the policy rate, we still think that's many years down the road, even as we do have improvement in economic numbers, both on the labor market and inflation front. All right, we're going to leave it there. Zach Griffiths of Wells Fargo. Thanks as always.